Autolimumab. Wikipedia article audio. Autolimumab, sold under the trade name Humira among others, is a medication used to treat rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, chronic psoriasis, hydradenitis suppurativa, and juvenile idiopathic arthritis. In rheumatoid arthritis, autolimumab has a response rate similar to methotrexate, and in combination, it nearly doubles the response rate of methotrexate alone. Autolimumab is a TNF-inhibiting, anti-inflammatory, biologic medication. It binds to tumor necrosis factor alpha, which normally binds to TNF-alpha receptors, leading to the inflammatory response of autoimmune diseases. By binding to TNF-alpha, Autolimumab reduces this inflammatory response. Because TNF-alpha is also part of the immune system, which protects the body from infection, treatment with autolimumab may increase the risk of infections. Medical Uses Rheumatoid Arthritis Humira costs approximately $4,370 per month. From 2012 to U.S. patent expiry in 2016, Humira led the list of top-selling pharmaceutical products, and in 2016, it had $16 billion of global sales. In 2014, in India, the first autolimumab biosimilar came to market at a price of $200. Two years later, Another Indian drug maker, Torrent Pharmaceuticals, launched a second biosimilar. Humira's U.S. patent expired in 2016. Like other TNF inhibitors, it is an immunosuppressive medication, used to treat autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis. Autolimumab is administered by subcutaneous injection. For most indications, the maintenance treatment is an injection every other week. Autolimumab has been shown to reduce the signs and symptoms of moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis in adults. It has also been shown to have efficacy in moderate to severe polyarticular juvenile idiopathic arthritis in children 4 and older, and is approved for the treatment of that condition. In RA, it has been approved for use alone, or with methotrexate or similar medicines, in the U.S. since 2002. In 2003, autolimumab began undergoing trials for use in treating psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. Psoriatic Arthritis Autolimumab has been shown to reduce the signs and symptoms of, and is approved for treatment of, ankylosing spondylitis in adults. Autolimumab has been shown to reduce the signs and symptoms of moderate to severe Crohn's disease. It has been approved for that use in the UK since 2009. Ankylosing spondylitis Autolimumab may be effective and well tolerated in ulcerative colitis. It has been approved by the FDA for treatment of moderate to severe cases in adults. Autolimumab has been shown to treat moderate to severe chronic plaque psoriasis in adults who have the condition in many areas of their body and who may benefit from taking injections or pills or phototherapy. Autolimumab has been shown to be effective therapy when used either continuously or intermittently in patients with moderate to severe psoriasis. Autolimumab has been approved for hydradenitis suppurativa. Crohn's disease Autolimumab has been shown to reduce the signs and symptoms of moderate to severe polyarticular juvenile idiopathic arthritis in children 4 and older. Ulcerative colitis Because autolimumab suppresses TNF, which is part of the immune system, 
latent infections such as tuberculosis can be reactivated, and the immune system may be unable to fight new infections. This has led to fatal infections in some patients. Plaque psoriasis After a number of studies and reports of adverse events in patients receiving otolimumab including serious and sometimes fatal blood disorders, serious infections, including tuberculosis and infections caused by viruses, fungi, or bacteria, rare reports of lymphoma and solid tissue cancers, rare reports of serious liver injury, rare reports of demyelinating central nervous system disorders, and rare reports of cardiac failure The U.S. Food and Drug Administration issued a black box warning to doctors, which appears in the product labeling of otolimumab and other TNF-inhibiting drugs, instructing them to screen and monitor potential patients more carefully. Anaphylaxis or other serious allergic reactions may also occur. Otolimumab was the first fully human monoclonal antibody approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. It was derived from phage display. Hydradenitis suppurativa Otolimumab was discovered as a result of a collaboration between BASF Bioresearch Corporation and Cambridge Antibody Technology, UK, itself a collaboration of the government-funded Medical Research Council and three academics, which began in 1993. Initially named D2E7, it was then further manufactured at BASF Bioresearch Corporation developed by BASF Knoll, and ultimately manufactured and marketed by Abbott Laboratories after Abbott's acquisition of BASF Pharma. On January 1, 2013, Abbott split into two companies, one retaining the Abbott name and the other named ABBVI. Humira is now owned by ABBVI. The brand name Humira stands for Human M. Monoclonal Antibody INR Humatoid Erythritis. It was the third TNF inhibitor, after infliximab and adenercept, to be approved in the United States. It was constructed from a fully human monoclonal antibody, while infliximab is a mouse human chimeric antibody and adenercept is a TNF receptor IgG fusion protein. The drug candidate was discovered initially using CATS phage display technology and named D2E7. The key components of the drug were found by guiding the selection of human antibodies from phage display repertoires to a single epitope of an antigen TNF alpha. The ultimate clinical candidate, D2E7, was created and manufactured at BASF Bioresearch Corporation and taken through most of the drug development process by BASF Knoll, then further development, manufacturing, and marketing by Abbott Laboratories, after Abbott acquired the pharmaceutical arm of BASF Knoll. On January 2, 2013, Abbott Laboratories separated into two independent companies, Abbott and ABBVI. As a result, ABBVI is taking responsibility for the further development and marketing of Humira. Juvenile idiopathic arthritis As of 2008, otolimumab had been approved by the FDA for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, Crohn's disease, moderate to severe chronic psoriasis and juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Although only approved for ulcerative colitis from late 2012 by the FDA in the disease's management, it had been used for several years in cases that have not responded to conventional treatment at standard dosing for Crohn's disease. Side Effects in March 2003, Cambridge Antibody Technology stated its wish to initiate discussions regarding the applicability of the royalty offset provisions for Humira with Abbott Laboratories in the High Court of London. 
In November 2004, the trial began, and in December 2004, Justice Hugh Laddie ruled for Cat. A short version of the full statement of the proceedings was released. In it Justice Laddie remarked, Abbott was in error when it made its first royalty payment to Cat calculated on the basis that only 2% of the net sales was due. It should have calculated on the basis of the full royalty of just over 5% and should have paid and continued to pay Cat accordingly. Justice Laddie went on to observe, that the construction advanced by Abbott does violence to the language of the agreements, renders them obscure and makes little or no commercial sense. For this reason Cat wins the action. Abbott was required to pay Cat 255 million US dollars, some of which was to be passed to its partners in development. Of this sum, the Medical Research Council received 191 million US dollars, and in addition, Abbott was asked to pay the MRC a further 7.5 million US dollar over five years from 2006 providing that Humira remains on the market. The MRC also is to receive a further £5.1 million in respect of past royalties. On May 29, 2009, Johnson & Johnson S. Senteker Unit, the maker of Remy Cade, won a ruling for $1.67 billion from Abbott Laboratories, the maker of Humira for patent infringement on the process for making Humira. However, in 2011 this judgment was overturned by the United States Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit. History Marketing Society and Culture Royalty Litigation In December 2014, Indian drug maker Kitala Healthcare declared the launch of the first otolimumab biosimilar at a fifth of its U.S. price. The generic has been launched under the brand name Exemptia. In January 2016, Indian drug maker Torrent Pharmaceuticals launched its biosimilar for otolimumab, called Adfrar. It was the second generic biosimilar of otolimumab. In September 2016, the FDA approved Amgen S Biosimilar, sold under the brand name Amgevita. Patent Litigation Biosimilars Similar Agents